Fuck me. What is even the point of anime or anime YouTube if you can't just do it direct? I mean, what are all these guys doing, right? What's why why would you be interested in cartoons and or guys in their bedrooms talking if you didn't just want the raw shit, the real experience, the truth, the center of the mind? That's what I'm here to help provide. Look, we gotta get a handle on this whole art thing. Art has a point. It has a clear purpose. It's all about just trying to help us to get it. To get what the hell is going on here. Because at the core of everything, humans are all basically the same. We've all got the same basic needs. The same basic desires. Like, if you... If you were stripped us of all of our cultural understanding of, you know, being in this, in the society we're born into, raised by the people we're raised by, if you took a person and you, you didn't give them language, you didn't give them, you know, these higher concepts that we all live and, and deal with, you could satisfy them by just keeping them fed and bred, you know, like people are simple creatures. The complexity comes from the fact that we form societies. We form societies so that we could propagate. We form societies to make it easier for us to live longer. For us to guarantee the safety of our offspring. But in building societies, we develop complex social systems in order for us all to coexist. And in doing so, we complicated ourselves. We complicated what it means to be human. And because most of us are born into society, we now have to come to terms with that. And unfortunately, because of the fact that society was not founded on everyone understanding how or why it works, it was instead founded on how do we convince people to participate in the systems we think are necessary in order for them to live as best they can. We created dogmas. We created, you know, ideas about what, what, what we need everyone to do for their own best interest, basically. Art basically tries to accomplish two goals. Either it's about understanding yourself and your place in society, or it's about trying to work within society to to further your goals trying to work with other people um so that's that's it uh, so here's solanine this is a work about understanding yourself and your sense of place it's a coming of age story about people who you know aren't really sure how they fit into the world and they're looking for an answer and what they'll find as any adult does is you're just you're the same as everyone else you're not special, and if you can't come to grips with that, you're probably going to end up uh, crashing your motorcycle and dying. You know, basic human shit. Boogie Pop. It's about a whole bunch of characters who are exploring the ways that they fit into society. It's about questioning the paradigms in place by pointing out that they are built on misconceptions about the world. One of the big wham lines at the end of the first book, this is not the first book, is uh, when the, the, the last narrator, she is so fixated on school and like the idea of normalcy that her criticism of the villain is to suggest that they are just simply abnormal, that they are inhuman, even though literally everyone in the story has some kind of, you know, hang up or unique property or something that is that is secretly way different about them. It basically presents a world where everyone is trying to be is fixated on like normalcy and following the script even though that script doesn't really apply to anyone all that easily. Um, you know, uh, Twin Peaks is another famous story about the same concept uh this one here genkaku picasso this is just about the fact that everyone has unique traumas underlying them and you you if you can sort those out people will be better this is what like most episodic stories are about is just like 
exploring all these different individual traumas in like bite-sized episodic way so it's like you know a bunch of mini solanines basically it's just get over your trauma and become a better person this is a yuri manga about two people trying to find themselves through connection with others so simultaneously it's a personal development and social development story which a lot of romance is basically it's about finding yourself through others through finding a place in society by way of an individual who will make you feel a more complete sense of self. Uh, Children of the Whales, this is a dystopia story. Dystopias are basically all about the idea that society, when founded on lies or when founded on misunderstanding, will lead people to not be able to participate correctly in the world around them. So just like the world we live in now, how most of our problems come from the fact that certain people who get it in their heads that they understand everything and so their word is law are the ones who are going to take over society and they fuck it up for the rest of us. I mean, any dystopia. Same story. Isekai. You know, this is a genre for people who don't feel that they have found a place in society so they go somewhere else to explore the things that they're good at. It's basically all about how you can like recognize the strength within yourself by being within a paradigm where the things that, that you can do well are actually meaningful. So for instance, in How Not to Summon a Demon Lord, which is on TV right now, the whole point is that the main character is a gamer who has a functional understanding of a bunch of advanced concepts, including empathy through stories, but he doesn't know how to apply those in real life because he has no self-worth. But in a world where he is extremely powerful and handsome and has women throwing themselves at him, he can explore these natural talents he has and come to realize, hey, maybe I am a badass. In How I Got Reincarnated as a Slime, it's uh, the guy's tactical skills. His understanding of the meta of games basically carries him through. I mean, that's usually the case, is that the understanding of the meta of games... Because, I mean, that's what games are in the first place. You're just re -engine reverse engineering the purpose of video games. Like, the purpose of video games is to create a system in which your capabilities like for instance a tactics game like if you're someone who thinks in a way that corresponds with tactics games it's like hey your way of thinking can save the world in this made up scenario and then you just literally isekai is just but what if like you actually went there and it was just literally you you know uh just makes the it makes there be less separation between the audience and the message Disappearance Diary. This is just a, an older gentleman chronicling the different types of psychological traumas that he has endured throughout life. You know, might help you if you're someone who who's dealt with similar issues or if you just want to understand why someone might or even just how someone might experience the 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 the, the fuck ups in life that this guy does. This will help you. Azumanga Daio. This is about social acceptance. It's about a bunch of diverse characters who, through being together, their strengths are magnified. I mean, any show about four girls in high school or, you know, a group of friends in high school is the same. It's always about how, you know, individually they didn't feel like they could do anything, but by their powers combined, they are able to you know, to function better or to, at the very least, feel a sense of community in place. Like, Azumanga Daio is not really, like, much of a coming-of-age story compared to something like Kaon, but, you know, ultimately the message behind it is the same. Community is good. Akira, another dystopia story, but this one is more, like, complex and has more to say about all of these things I'm describing. It talks about, you know, how children feel this lack of social acceptance, the progress being made as we have, like, further stages of evolution in in humanity. Like, a lot of Japanese stories are fixated on psychics and this idea of, um, you know, being born with some kind of innate power that could shape the future of the world. Gundam, for instance, has the concept of new types. Just people who are more capable of communication or just more powerful than what came before and how do these new people slot into 
the society as it's currently been built, or how will they remake society from the ground up? How will the existence of this new generation, you know, recreate the the paradigms that we currently have in place, which is something that is constantly happening, because every time we, you know, have enough genetic distance from previous generations and enough technological difference, the world is shaped differently enough that we need to reconsider the paradigms we've built. And uh, Akira does that by just blowing all of fucking Tokyo 3 up and starting back from scratch. Was it Tokyo 3? Am I just thinking of Ava? Ava's the same fucking thing. A Girl on the Shore. This is another one about finding yourself, but this one is specifically through the lens of sexuality and, uh, you know, how, how these kids who feel sort of despondent and and distant from the people around them, like, use sex as a way to explore themselves and what they're really looking for in relationships and uh, in the world. You know, and this brings me to the subject that, in my opinion, what art should really be focused on is the fetish. Art should always be focusing on the most unique aspect of itself. Because, broadly, Again, we all want the same things. And so if you analyze enough art, you will come to this conclusion that they're all basically trying to get us to the same place. That they're all about accepting yourself and then accepting others and working within society. Just to clarify, when I say that the fetish is the only thing that matters, I don't mean that all art should have the goal of being as fetishistic as possible. What I mean is that the fetish is what makes them distinct from one another and why one piece of art might relate to some people and not to others. Even if it is a broad piece of media, when we're talking about anime, like, regardless, it is never going to be the most broad it could be because it is anime. So it already inherently is fetishistic in that sense, that it's appealing to a type of person who needs anime to give them the answers specifically for whatever reason that might be. Ergo, fixating on what is unique about anime's ability to relate to people in broad terms or in the specific terms of each individual show is the most interesting lens with which to view anime, in my opinion. Granted, a lot of them have a pessimistic, cynical view on the ability to do that. Not all of them purport that we are going to have a good future. A lot of art is written by people who have, you know, seen this and then gone, well, it's not going to work. Like, no, people aren't good inherently. Most people are sociopaths. Most people will fuck you. And I mean, I think it's healthy to be cynical and to consume that type of media because I think that, you know, it helps you to deal with this world we live in to understand that it can, you know, fuck you. That, that, that even if you are optimistic, you must be optimistic with cynicism. You must understand that not everyone has your best interests at heart and that most of the world is ignorant. But to work within that system and to, you know, continue striving to do your best to change the way things are, to not give in. Because as soon as you give in, what the fuck is the point of even being alive at that point? You know, why even continue if you're not going to do anything? All right, Ava. Again, this is about personal acceptance via social acceptance. Shinji cannot accept himself because other people don't accept him in his perception, because they don't accept him on his terms. Similarly, Asuka just wants to be accepted on her terms, but they can't come to terms with each other, and this causes lots of fuck-ups. And even though Shinji keeps learning pieces of the lesson, he never really gets the full picture until end of Ava, when he has the opportunity to give up on communication and just become part of a thought entity, to just literally fuse with everyone else and just give himself over to the system. But what he realizes is that in doing that, it would mean that there there is no opportunity for evolution anymore. Like, we now know everything we know, and there's nothing, you know, like, whatever separated us or made us unique or made us able to communicate is gone, and he does not want that. He ultimately still seeks to have, you know, outside, to, to not just be in, entirely, um, you know, consumed with himself. He wants there to be more than one, and thus... Asuka, who would literally rather die than be, you know, put into this system, 
he says, well, if it's if it's not good enough for her to just be assimilated into me, then I guess it's up to me to learn how to live with her you know, as separate entities. And that's what the end of Ava is about. Monogatari series. This is an, this is one that is, again, about individual traumas. It's about how, you know, the, the different things that have happened to us shape who we are and how if we can overcome these traumas, we can grow into more full selves and deal with other people. That's kind of the intrigue of the different seasons is that in the Bake Monogatari stories, it's about people coming to terms with themselves. But then in Monogatari, the second story, it's more about them finding a place amongst other people um, for those who already are, you know, like sort of f figured out in their own selves. Uh, which is also the arc structure of Gurren Lagann and Darling in the Franks. Both of those, the first part of the show is about characters coming to terms with themselves, and the second part is about them coming to terms with society and the way forward. And both of them ultimately are about trying to escape entropy. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, Genshiken, this is just an exploration of the, the otaku and what it means to be an otaku. It's... It's not even so much about characters coming of age or finding themselves, so much as exploring what is this type of person. And it's really more of like reaching out to connect with you. Like, hey man, if you're like this, don't worry. Like, there's other people like this too. And I think this is the best representation of what anime and otaku culture has always been about. Because I really think in Japan... All these things I'm saying about anime is recognized by, like, the adult otaku community. I think they know that it's all the same, that it's all just reaching out to the new types, you know, to the autists, the spectrum, um, to, you know, signal to them that there's other people who think the way they do and that it's okay to not only... Not only is it okay to think this way because other people think that way, but you can find a sense of community in it. The main character, uh, Sasahara, at the start of the story, he is a full-blown otaku. He knows that. But it's only because he finds these other guys who think the way he does that he's able to feel that sense of acceptance, to come into his own, to fully embrace the hobby, eventually to get into a relationship with a girl who's totally in denial about her own otakuness because of traumas from her past. And the two of them work through that together and become... A really great couple and in the meantime have a sense of community with these other people and I mean this is like the more this is the more grounded version I mean like what these people do is not save the world but they do like find careers and draw manga and like you know uh, become fucking functional humans through their sense of community that they develop so when I talk about all anime being the same or how my perspective on it has gotten to a place where I feel it it's difficult for me to relate to other anime fans. It's not because I think that this is a bad thing. By no means. It's always all been the same. All art has always been the same. To me, the most intriguing parts of art are how they fit into this meta-narrative. How do they communicate the broad stuff more effectively or in you know in more unique ways than other stories do or how what what do they present that is unique what in an aesthetic sense for instance because aesthetics they are still trying to tell the same story we're all again every story is the same we're all just trying to tell the story of you know ourselves any artist is just trying to make their perception understood by the rest of the world but there are things about how we perceive the world that can't be communicated through language. Because, I mean, well, through, you know, through uh, speech, I mean to say. Because the English language, for instance, is just it's, ju it's just not that complex. Like, there's plenty of words, but they don't, there's not enough to describe everything. I mean, there's some words that have, like, ten fucking meanings, and they still can't cut to the heart of the matter. And it's really funny when you might, for instance, hear Anthony Fantano across 10 reviews describe uh, 10 different guys' vocals as tortured. It's one of his favorites. And yet, when you listen to each of them, you might get a different vibe. Like, it's not the same torture that they're all undergoing. But how do we specify more than that without just pointing at the thing and saying that? You know, at some point... 
you can't always break it down. You can't always put it into words. Not to say that you can't analyze it, you could. In fact, I would say that recreating something is in many ways an even more analytical. Like if you can look at an aesthetic and then you can create something in that same aesthetic, it definitely shows that you had to have some understanding, some resonance between you in order to do that, you know? Uh, a lot of my videos, I don't even care as much about what I'm saying as about how I'm saying it, and I've changed the minor elements of my presentation constantly on the basis of what I see other people doing. For instance, my Boku no Hero Academia video that I did recently where it was all live action, um, or the one right before that on Alucard's introduction being a ripoff, are both inspired by Zen Huxtable and his editing style. And it's because, like, I saw... What I saw in his art was someone who wholesale is just being himself and nothing else. Like, there's no attempt to make something that people are going to like necessarily. Like, not to say that he's, you know not talking about the common subjects or editing them to at least a level where it's acceptable by most people. But he's somebody who recognized that making the same 15 minute long formulaic analysis video that so many people have been making for the last 10 years or however the fuck long we've been doing this, like why would that be what people on YouTube want? Why would we come to such obscure mediums as anime and YouTube if we were not looking for the specific, for the individual, for what makes you unique? And it's funny because for me, I've always separated these things. I've always tried to pull myself, even though like the stuff I write about is extremely like me and extremely uniquely my perspective, the presentation of my work has always been very broad. And it's just because I'm trying to make money and I'm trying to have a huge audience. And I've always seen it as like, well, if I don't try to make it broad, then I'm not going to like, I, I used to always say cast a wide net and then, you know, reel, reel them in. Like, you, you make something really broad and easily watchable so that most people will watch it, but then you make it more and more specific and you cull that down until you've got just your guys. But why would your guys even click on the broad video? Like, I don't watch almost any anime YouTubers except for Zen Huxtable. And the reason I watch his stuff is because it's so distinctly him that I won't get these videos from anybody else. And so even though people do feel that way about me and my opinions, like my presentation style is so similar to others that why would people who are, who are on YouTube to find whatever I uniquely have to offer, like will they even see through this stuff. And that's why there's so many people who complain about like my clickbaity titles or or the 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 accessible thumbnails and titles that I go with. And I, the way I see it, it's always just been that's just marketing. It's just to market it to the biggest audience possible. But if ultimately what I net is people who won't get the point and people who would have gotten the point are scared away by the clickbaity title, I've got the entirely wrong audience now. So but it's still a tightrope and there's a lot of fear involved. There's a lot of fear involved in like, I'm going to try to publish this chan this video on the main channel. Are people going to be like, oh, this is an After Dark video. Like, what the fuck does it matter? Like, this is, a, this is the most important anime video I'm going to make this year. And what presentation style it has is the one that benefited the message best. I tried to write this as a text post. I was writing a post called The Purpose of Anime. And I got four paragraphs in and I went, no one's going to know what the fuck I'm talking about because this sounds, it sounds pretentious. It sounds overblown. And unless you already like agree with my premise, it's not going to help you. What will help you is if I just fucking make my point violently clear by grabbing things off the shelf and being like, this is about a guy who didn't fit into society, but then society breaks down and now there's potential for him to find a place in it. Pretty much the same story as any zombie story. They're all just uh, libertarian fantasies about like, what if this society that I that I hate turned into one where I'm the only one who knows what to do. You know, especially if you're a gun nut. It's 
it's a beautiful time. Uh, Blade of the Immortal, this one's, again, about exploring, like, unique types of sociopathy. The main character has to kill a thousand evil men. So it's just about exploring different manifestations of evil and terminating them. Uh, you've got... I haven't actually read this one. Um, Gunslinger Girl, traumas, individual people, like, exploring their their mental hangups and also the ways that it's, it's a, a lot of it is about developmental psychology. So it's like the traumas are happening in real time. Not only are all the characters have, do they all have traumatic pasts, but they are traumatizing each other in the process of the story even further. So, uh, you know, uh, I don't think I need to keep doing this. I think you get the point. I can apply this to anything. It's all about understanding yourself and then understanding how you fit in society and if you want to take your story to the final page, you got to go the girl in the gone, darling in the Franks, Evangelion route, and try to escape entropy. Because if, if you start looking at the world scientifically and you start breaking down that everything makes sense, that, you know, there is a core reason behind why you are who you are and why society is how it is, then you have to think, okay, well, let's say we all get on the same page. Let's say everybody understands themselves we got Star Trek. Star Trek, a world where every, where they've eliminated resource scarcity, everyone's on the same side. Where do we go from there? You just got to find as much information as possible. Like, we, we, we know we can't stay on Earth because it's going to eventually, we're going to exhaust all the resources here and the sun's going to explode. So let's go somewhere else. Maybe we'll find more answers there. Oh, maybe entropy will eventually make the universe just, like, go cold and die. Well, we got to get out of the universe. Uh, how are we going to do that? I don't know. Got to figure it out. Got to go run around, figure it out, solve more codes. You know, it always ends the same way because it's all the same fucking story. But let's talk about why each of these stories is uniquely interesting. Use these stories as a way to understand the unique hangups that people have that have brought them to becoming the people that they are. If you watch my videos and you don't get Digibro out of them, then it's not going to help you at all to come to terms with my existence. And I think that a lot of my core fans have done that by going to the After Dark, by going to the Modal Soul channel. But as a result, it just means that the main channel is, is a, a lifeless husk of what it should be, which should be just a constant expression of what uniquely I have to bring to the table, uh, which is this. It is my categorical meta understanding of fucking everything I consume. Uh, goodbye.